Hello and welcome to Vice Man Channel. It's uh, being recorded in a high summer Sweden, and boy, let me tell you, it's adore. It's more than 28 degrees inside my apartment, so if you see me sweat, it's because of that. But I still make a video for you, my beloved patrons. Now today, we're going to talk about more about LF sniffing. This is going to be my second video about it. And I'm going to show you how to do sniff a reader, but without the card, and how it relates to then apply those things to sniffing with a card. So I'm going to use the Fairpoint reader, what I talked about before, and used in the first video. I'm going to use my Proxmark. I have a card here. It's going to beep a little bit, but you know, bear with me. Let's head over to the camera here. Clear that stuff out. I already turned on the plot window. So first of all, we are going to use the cockpit mod and look at our things. Let's see, T0, and clear these things out. Great, and done. Now the threshold, the dash S. Uh, oops, we talked about this in the last video. It's a little too big. Let's see if we can do this one and we stick the seat. Oh, maybe. Uh, I talked about these two. The trigger threshold, meaning that as soon as you get that little bit of voltage onto the reader on the, the proximal antenna from the reader, it starts uh, capturing the samples. And this S skip samples. We'll see if we can use this to today to, uh, you know, to play a little bit more with it. We're also going to use from my call data time scale. It's hidden under there the data commands and it's the visualizer we're going to specifically use this one here lf samples uh, for one of the lots, reading will be in milliseconds so if we do this this is a purely visual thing so we just cover this and paste it you will see that something happened on my clock window it added a 0.00 ms so now when i out the markers here later on you're going to see how much these dots correlates to milliseconds pretty nifty anyway let's do a sniff but i can't because right now we are not having any threshold i want to do a threshold of 20 first to sniff and i will do a reader and i will just present approximately to it oh i might just do oh, so i'm gonna move a card first I'm gonna Trigger and do this first. I'm not going to jump ahead. Sniff. Nothing happened because I couldn't present my prox mark in time of uh, before all this sample memory ran out on the prox mark. I can do sniff with the prox mark on the reader like this. I will see what we can do. We're zooming out. We see these two spikes here. You know what that is? I think I mentioned in the last video, it's the reader pulses. This is when the reader turns on its own uh, voltage to the antenna and creates a field. It's a little bit wrong, so I'm going to do another sniff, see if we can get a better one. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let's see if it starts here. Let me zoom in. First of all, I'm going to cut away some stuff here. Trim it off. A little bit easier to work with. And I will zoom in here. Each dot here is, since the proxmark is sampling LF right now at 125 kilohertz, it's one uh, divided by 125,000, which is eight microseconds. So what we see here between is a distance of, oops, I'm gonna move it here. And down here is a DT means distance and it's 40 dots. That will be converted now with this nifty time scaling 0.32 micros milliseconds which is this 320 microseconds if i zoom out you see a really great decrease slowly there if i zoom out and look at this you see it jumps up now and you're like what is happening it's because of the big values from the reader that goes to the max uh, and the whole clock window automatically scales to what the largest numbers are so don't we worry just just this thing 
scaling. So I'm zooming out now. And you see this is the frequency carriers here, but spilling over, goes like this, steps, the phase shifters, more or less, and then goes down here. And we have another pulse. And this is in an opposite polarity. And this one is, how much is this one? 139, 1 1.1 milliseconds. Okay, so second stop one. So in between here, this reader has a stop pulse and see if something is happening. And then it tries to send out a stop pulse and see if something happens. Or maybe that's the second stop pulse. But it doesn't seem to do anything with the signal after that one. So that's, how we, that's why I would say it's a stop pulse. Now, what does that relate to us? We know how long it is. And how long is the distance between these ones? If I zoom in here, I put this one there, I zoom out again, and I put this one there. And you see the whole pulse, the polling pulse of this reader is about 154 milliseconds. Or yeah, 160, I guess, if we do it correctly in the beginning and in total length. Uh, what tells us something about that? The polling pulse of this reader. Now, if I put a card, and I want to see, I get a better snip than I did last time. Uh, remember, set the threshold. Threshold means that you know we're skipping all this, and here when this signal starts to uh, start, the spike comes up, and this is when when the clock starts collecting um, the, the, the samples. So if I, I change this to twenty again, and I present card reader you see that we got a whole heap of data which is kind of nice and the end pulse but we don't see the stop pulse here so let's do it again now we got the end but then it's in the beginning and here is a good short snip this now correlates with what we saw before we have a stop pulse and you see it turns on the carrier here and you see a message, and then you see another message, and another message, and another message. And this is the tag responding to the reader on this field, and there is a stop pulse. So if we zoom in, it's even better here, because you can almost see the frequency shifting here. If I mix this two up here, I guess measure this little thing here, it says distance is 54. Should be 50 if this frequency shifting normally, 0.4 milliseconds, and this would be one bit. When you see field clock 50, that would be it. If I do LFF, actually, do this data grid x50, I'm telling the proxima to write bottoms everywhere it is. Oops, not want that much. Uh, I want to lock it. I want to go like this. Do that. I want to see this. Now I lock it. And now you can see here's one bit, here's another bit, here's another bit. You can see the bits, but since the this is how, the, how that field clock would have um, determined the bits here. We can see it manually like this. We can zoom in. This here is one phase of the values. And then you see this little jump down here. This is a phase shift it does. And then the signal goes up here again. So every time it changes frequency and the frequency shifting, it actually makes a little phase shift down here. You can see it on the other ones as well here. Here. Kind of funny to see it when you know about it. And that's why you get this little up thing here as well. And if we do the LX uh, negative one, you can see how the demodulation of code matches perfectly what we lined up before for the grids. Let me zoom out a bit more. Oops, zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. So you see the whole thing. This fits into the reader window. 
and this is one, here is one, and then there's nothing, and then here's some other shit. And it looks kind of similar, doesn't it? So this is a tag answering within this time four times. It sends out this 32 bits of data or yeah, what should send during this time here. So this is what you learn when you're looking at the slicking. Did that make sense? If it didn't make sense, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you pretty soon with the next video.